Welcome, dear viewers, today to our series, Natural Medicine. Today we talk about our musculoskeletal system, especially when it comes to the adhesion of the fasciae. Stiffness, bad posture, long periods of sitting, and at some point later, there is an uncomfortable limp and you just notice the whole musculoskeletal system no longer works in its flow. And today there is a movement researcher expert, Karl Müller, and we will go deeper into this topic and above all show possible solutions. Stay tuned. Hello dear Carl, thank you for coming. Thank you, Karina. We already did an interview together, and today I am very happy that we're talking about this problem of limping. Because you see it often, especially with older people, which also leads to an increased risk of falling in nursing homes, or you also somehow notice unsteadiness in the household. Going up the stairs, everything becomes a bit more risky, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Limping is a visible sign that there is something in the body behind it that shouldn't be. We're born right or left-handed, as well as right or left-footed, so our jumping power on the right and left isn't the same. And if we were born like this, and walked barefoot in the sand all our lives, then the left and the right side would be trained in exactly the same way, because the floor is always the same. But if we walk in shoes that support on the floor, we don't train our feet. So the strong side gets stronger, the weak side gets weaker. The floor alone, the flat, hard floor, leads to that, in the course of life, we become more and more one-sided and automatically begin to limp. Almost all old people, elderly people, limp, visible or not visible. Have you already noticed that in younger people, I have now observed time and again, especially with adolescents or young people, the knee bends, the foot is a flat foot, so that even at a young age, a program is running which shows us an unclean walking flow. You can measure the limp. There are force plates that you can walk over or stand on. Like when I was with you, we were with you at your company and I did a test like that. Exactly. You can see, how do I stand on the left? Do I put more strain on the left? Back left more? Front right more? You can already see these relieving postures. And limping is a relieving posture, visible relieving posture. If it's not yet visible, visually visible, one doesn't speak of a limp yet, but that comes very early through muscle imbalances because of one-sidedness, because I have one leg or one foot which is more coordinatively balanced and the other one is stronger and faster. And that drifts apart, as I, as I said, by walking on hard floors. And at some point, it becomes visible. And when it becomes visible, one speaks of a limp whereby the person themselves, who usually says, no, I'm not limping, tell someone you're limping, no, I'm not. <laughs> you have to ask their spouse. They'll say, yes, they're limping. You don't like doing that. It, it has such a negative touch, but it would be good if you would admit it and take action against the limp, because we have so many customers who come with an orthopedic problem to us. We then examine what is behind it and so on. And then we found out that if you walk on elastic springy materials, one, two to four or six centimeters thick mats, what happens when you walk on such mats? Then we examined it scientifically and found that people, on average, limp 
84% less. I was then allowed to attend the International Fascia Congress in Berlin and present this pilot study. And it was met with a lot of interest because it's with a very simple means. Simply walking on elastic springy material improves limping. I brought two examples. Where you can see it. Uh, the next one. Yeah, exactly. This man on the left, you can see him limping. This is how he walked. Mm -hmm. And he told me he can only walk 400 meters before the pain gets unbearable. Then I let him walk on our mats and he limped 80% less immediately. Immediately. I didn't have to tell him anything, nothing at all, just, just on the mat. And what happens in the body? You could speak for two hours alone. A lot is controlled and regulated in the fascia apparatus, so that this relieving posture can no longer happen. It's forced. Limping is just standing longer on one leg and taking a step longer. The load is always the same when you limp. For a brief moment, I stand on one foot with all of my body weight. But when I limp, I stand a little less long. I stand less long where I limp and take a longer step with the other leg. And then there is an imbalance in the hip again. Then there are all these stories again. Yeah, because I'm on one side, there's a pelvic twist. Because I'm taking a longer step on one side, then that goes into the back. Maybe the back was the cause. Sometimes the foot is the cause. Here, the cause is an amputated leg. But on the next picture, here, it's, uh, it's a stiffened ankle. In the picture on the left, where she walks in socks, you, you can see that the ankle is stiff. Unfortunately, from my point of view, the surgeon made a mistake here. The ankle was at too acute an angle. It should be stiffened at a right angle, but was stiffened at too acute an angle. Then she could roll the foot even worse. The upper ankle must be able to move so that you don't have to limp. In the middle, where she wears the shoe, her shoe that she came in, she turns the shoe a bit outwards, that she has to compensate less in the hip and knee. These are all automatisms that run automatically and that are controlled in the fascia apparatus. We then had to prepare our elastic springy sole shoes for her a little. We had to put a wedge in the back because the ankle was not properly stiffened surgically. Well, there is actually no proper stiffening because you should never stiffen. She had it stiffened because of the pain. Surgeons stiffened because of osteoarthritis, because of osteoarthritis pain. And of course, because of the patient, because they say, I want to get rid of this pain and don't know the alternatives. Today, the woman walks completely painlessly and she no longer limps. Simply because she walks on elastic, springy material. Can you actually reverse that? The stiffening? No, that's impossible. No, that, that is irreversible, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, and here you can see so different walk patterns. The springiness was clearly visible on the left. On the left, yeah, you can see how a person walks so resiliently in nature. The muscles are actually the best suspension for the joints. And the skeleton on the left walks on elastic springy material. On a, a flat treadmill on the left, it, it's not just an animation. Okay. These are real recordings, by the way. That, that's me here on the left. 
Okay. Yeah. Ah, okay. Exemplary. <laughs> it wouldn't be credible if it wasn't exemplary. And there, the foot rolls completely differently. And all the neuromyofascia behave like a, a shock absorber system, starting at the foot, where the foot rolls with a powerful balancing act. And so the whole mechanism with the reactive arm swing moves resiliently. Great. And on the right is just such a representative walk. If I have someone like that on the right and they start now with the shoes to stimul simulate this soft ground, how can one imagine the temporal implementation that they come out of the limp and into this upright walk? So, what we saw before with these two people, in these two cases, the limp improved immediately. For the woman, by 95%, for the man, perhaps by 80%. Depending on what is causing the limp, it can also be something from an accident in the past where you were in pain. For example, the ankle is twisted out of pain. Then it is unfortunately still the case that people spend four weeks like having a ski boot on their foot. And then they limp for two or three months. They have to walk on sticks. When they walk without, they do a bit of physiother physiotherapy. If you measure people, young people afterwards, they'll keep limping for their whole life. Of course, I also have a few examples with athletes. You have a broken shin or God knows what, and then you get a plate in for six months. Then exactly these stories start to develop. Then you get the plate out again, but the whole body now has this... This, this new movement pattern, exactly. Because... The fascia apparatus, our, our onboard computer, the, the fascia apparatus, has learned something new. The limp is programmed in. And that is almost the least likely to get rid of. Pain, when someone limps because of pain, knee osteoarthritis, we usually get rid of it immediately and very, very quickly and for the long term. This limp and the pain too. The hardest thing is if it's a habit with younger people, it is very difficult to get rid of that. It, it is mostly improved. It then indirectly needs the muscle building of the fine muscles and the new learning, learning again through the fascia apparatus, like a, a tennis player or a, a golfer. They have to keep repeating, repeating or somersaults or whatever. Skills you have as physical skills, you, you have to practice. Practice, 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 practice. And, and walking is also something that has been practiced. That is actually the basic exercise that we humans do. And if I now use this by constantly walking on elastic, springy materials, then in most cases it will improve. Also up to 95, 98%. But it, it takes a lot more time there. A severe limp goes away faster in general. A weak limp that's been around for a long time, just out of habit, that is more difficult. OK. And here you just see the same thing again, if I can quickly show this. Here you actually see the same thing, only with the movement of the feet below because the cause is in the feet. But now she also rolls over the heel, doesn't she? Or am I wrong? Below left, the lady with the blue shoes. With your shoes. Uh, she, she rolls, that's actually supposed to be the case. We see that in the example. I was in Kenya and just recorded a lot of Maasai people. Mm -hmm. 
And even when they walk barefoot in nature, they roll the foot really hard. So you also roll barefoot in nature. Yes, there were so many theories now. But if I run or jog now and wear barefoot shoes, or do it barefoot, but then I'll come up on top, right? There are different types of people. Ah, uh, OK. And it, it depends on what goal I'm pursuing. If I want to be a 100-meter world champion, or short distances in general, the shorter the distance, the faster the more forefoot. With world champions in marathon, everything is on the forefoot. Everything. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean it's healthy. We're mainly talking about health here. Health means that the entire musculoskeletal system should be in balance, that I should walk balancing. And if I want to walk balancing, then I have to roll vigorously. Because then the tibia and fibula balance. In technical terms, one speaks of the, the rain mechanism. Tibia and fibula, the entire lower legs, must work together so that the foot can act perfectly as a shock absorber for the joints. You, you can see that in the skeleton below. The shoe below is a bit too exaggerated. That's too much of a good thing. Yes, OK. I just wanted to know that. In nature, you wouldn't roll your feet so extremely. We may still have pictures. Um, in, in other presentations, I have pictures. Uh, not here, apparently. Oh, yes, yeah, here. You can see that on the left, that they roll. They walk powerfully. They also walk over the outer edge, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't do that either. We just bang on it and bend inward. So they go over the outside. The touchdown of the foot begins more in the supination, it's called. Rather, slightly on the outside, and then the foot goes over the big toe. Just look. So actually, a round movement. It's a, a spiralling motion because the muscles are also arranged in a spiral shape. The movement isn't just a straight fold down, but spiralling. And this movement, which is a natural movement, there are many theories. I also know with well, you have to walk forefoot and so on, all the person first moves, they walk from front to back. I've never seen this in nature. I've seen many indigenous people have traveled all over the world all my life. Uh, that is the natural walk. That also keeps the whole muscle chains, neuromyofacial chains, in tension, and thereby also protects the joints. But it's not the most efficient walk. It's not a performance-oriented walk, that's not it. The goal is health. Yes, I noticed that when I was jogging with your shoes. Without the shoes, of course, you somehow had the pace and bigger steps in focus. And now, with your shoes, I'm more centred and make small steps. So short steps, but I feel com a completely different balance or strengthening. Yeah, balance is actually the right term. You balance walking or jogging. Balance should be exercised while walking or jogging. There was once a study, I worked with Dr. Wessinghager, who used to be a world-class runner. He's a, a specialist, and, and he told me there was a study where measurements were taken at the finish line, how much an athlete goes up and down. And the one who's gone up and down the least with the centre of gravity and the head is the one who's won. And the last one was the one who went up and down with his head the most. When you walk balancing, the navel, so the body's centre of gravity, is high up. And when I walk balancing on a rope, I can't go up and down like that. Then my whole body is in tension, and I always stay high up. And this type of jogging is the one that is the healthiest. 
die gesundeste ist schlussendlich to simply summarize it. zusammengefasst, weil deine Because your muscles are always in tension. Super. Great. Yeah. So interesting again. You brought us a video here. Yeah, I never would have thought that a shoe would do so much, but it really does. And I recommend this to everyone, especially older people who have problems walking. Buy these shoes. Yeah, I, I don't know this customer, but I heard that he was so excited he wanted to do a video with us and wanted to tell the world because he could hardly walk anymore and now he walks in nature for hours. That's the thing for old people and have enjoyed nature or used to hike and can no longer hike, have played tennis in the past, no longer play tennis. It's a big piece of quality of life that people lose when they limp while walking, have pain when walking where you can get out of it on a on elastic springy soles. Do you play tennis with them too? Because I didn't wear them to tennis now. Because I kind of thought, oh, maybe I'll kind of swim or bend or I have no idea. We have a tennis player on our website over 70 years of age. Mm -hmm. High performance, he became European vice champion for the over 70s but had to stop in the meantime. He tells his story himself, and you can see him playing tennis in our uh, shoe with the thick elastic springy sole. And he became European vice champion. By the way, I visited Martina Hingis's mother once because I heard she played tennis in Kibun shoes and asked her different things. She only had, I'm not allowed to say why, anyway, she, she says that this is also good for her young athletes, whom she trains, to play like this every now and then, because they get a completely different body feeling to play on this soft elastic floor. It's a good thing as a, as a training in between, because you get better body awareness. Try it out. I'll try it out. If you don't necessarily have to win. <laughs> because it will make you weaker, of course. Yes, I noticed that the first time I went jogging, I also thought, holy moly, I was quite exhausted afterwards. But it's very interesting as a training. I play tennis in my Cuban shoes. Okay, super cool. Then I'll try that out. Dear Carl, thank you very much for being here. It was super interesting. Again, I would also like to do an interview with you about jogging so that we can shed some light on all the variations. And I hope to see you again soon. If people still want to find out more and really say, OK, I would like to try this out and read more about it, maybe also look at studies, are there any possibilities? You can simply enter... Kaibun Joya on Google. Kibun is written K-Y-B-U-N and Joya, J-O-Y-A. Both terms are sufficient. And, and then they get you to the Kibun Joya therapy method as an alternative to surgery. Great. Thank you very much, Karina. Thank you too. Dear viewers, I hope you were able to take a, something away with you. There is no greater gift than being able to evade surgery and walk through life really pain-free and with ease again. As I said, more information is also available on our website, qs24.tv. You can also enter the name of our guest and find more interviews. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful time and see you soon. Bye. Tschüss.